Welcome to worship here today at Wesley Memorial Church in High Point, North Carolina. We're delighted that you have taken time to worship with us this day. We're a Christ-centered congregation who takes wonderful delight in worshiping God because we know that we find our highest good in the worship of God. On this Lord's Day, we're actually resuming some indoor worship in our beautiful sanctuary at 8.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. We would be delighted if you'd join us in the sanctuary for worship also. But again, thank you for being with us right now for this broadcast of worship. Now, let us worship God. Give thanks unto the Lord and call upon his name. Tell the peoples what things he has done. Oh, let your songs be of him and praise him, and let your speech be of all his wondrous deeds. Would you pray with me? Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture text for this Lord's Day is found in the Gospel of Matthew, beginning at the first verse of chapter 22. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. 
He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Here in the text, we catch up with Jesus again in the city of Jerusalem during his last week of earthly ministry. He again is telling a story. He's telling a story that is condemning to some people, and he's focusing this condemnation toward the chief priest and the Pharisees, the religious leaders there in the city. And he's telling this story to make sure that everyone who hears him understands something about the kingdom of heaven. And when Matthew's gospel refers to the kingdom of heaven, it's, it is his way of referring to the kingdom of God. You see, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is not just the afterlife, but it's this life also. It's this life lived under the influence of the king. It's this life lived with an understanding that God is sovereign over all of life. And this kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, in which we live, should live, is also pictured as a banquet, a great celebration of intimacy between the king, the king's son, and the king's people. So here is the story that Jesus told on that day. He said, once upon a time there was a king, and this king gave a wedding banquet for his son. And this king sent his servants out into the realm, inviting people to come to the wedding banquet. And the shocker of the story is the people refused to come. Can you imagine that audacity? It would be almost as if you received an invitation from the White House or from Buckingham Palace and you refused to come. So, of course, the king is angry. The king is enraged because the king has prepared mounds of food for this banquet and the people are refusing to come. So we pick up the story again, verse 4. It says, again, the king sent other servants saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized the king's servants mistreated them, and killed them. So certainly the king was enraged. The people refused to come. So at this point, the king sends out his servants again after he has destroyed many who refuse to come, and they gather into the banquet hall everyone that they can find. The text says both good and good bad. When you look at this text, you notice that there are two responses to the invitation. Two responses to the invitation to come to the banquet hall and participate in this great celebration. There are two responses. In the text, you see that one group just refuses to come, and it says that they seized the king's servants, mistreated them, and killed them. That is certainly a terrible response to this gracious invitation from the king. I suspect that most of us would never respond to the king this way. But there's a second response 
to the invitation recorded here in the text. And this second response is the fact that some of the people just made light of the invitation. And they went on with their lives, some to their farms and some to their businesses. I'm afraid that many of us perhaps would respond that way to the king's invitation. I'm afraid that many of us, many of us who are even church-going people, would end up in this group just making light of the invitation, just being preoccupied with our farms, our businesses, our daily lives. I'm afraid that many of us would end up in this group and we would be among these people who could not make time to attend the king's banquet for the sake of the son. You know, sometimes in life we are so preoccupied, sometimes in life we are so distracted that we say yes to so much that we end up saying no to some really important matters concerning our life, things that matter most in life. Sometimes we make the mistake in our living that we begin to think that being busy busy somehow equals being successful. Sometimes in life we spend so much time pleasing everyone that we wind up pleasing everyone except the king. I suspect that most of us know what our priorities in life should be. But we forget. We know what those priorities should be. We know that our first priority should be our relationship to God, living as God would have us to live. And then our second priority should be dealing with loving our family and those people that God has given us to love. I suspect most of us understand how we should create our list of priorities, what should be first and what should come further down the list. I really believe that when we get to the end of our journey, the end of our life, the most important question for any of us will be this question. How well have I loved? How well have I loved God first and foremost? And how well have I loved the people that God has given me to love? I suspect that most of us understand the proper priorities of life or you perhaps wouldn't be listening to this sermon this morning. We understand that God's will for us should come first. God, the creator, should have first say, first claim on our lives. Our devotion to God should be our organizing principle in life. And as we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, we will begin to find that every Thing else begins to fall into place. Most of us understand our priorities and how they should be ordered, but sometimes we just start living in the midst of our busyness and without really realizing it or intending it, we have all of our priorities out of whack. We need to make our priorities, set our priorities, and then tenaciously cling to those priorities. I keep my calendar in a black binder because for me my calendar is almost a sacred document. The way I order, the way I organize my life really does betray my priorities. So I like to put a lot of thought and energy and effort into my schedule, into the way I set the calendar, because that's part of how I tenaciously cling to my priorities. Here in this text, the king has issued an invitation. Some people respond with great anger. 
to that invitation. And there are those kinds of people in the world. And the more gracious that God is, the more angry they become. But the other group here in the text just made light of the invitation. And they just stayed preoccupied with their livelihoods. In his book, Crazy Busy, the author Kevin DeYoung writes this. The antidote to over-busyness isn't sloth and indifference, but rather rest, death to pride, acceptance of our own finitude, and trust in God's providence. I commend that book to you, Crazy Busy, by Kevin DeYoung. And that book can help you, help us, take back our lives, to appropriately order our loves, to live a life being mindful of our priorities. And as we live our life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, acknowledging the reign of God in our lives, we will be enjoying the kingdom of heaven here on earth, and then when it comes time for us to leave this earth for the world to come, that depth of relationship will continue into the afterlife. But in order to cure the busyness of our lives, in order to take back our living, to make sure that our living is the life that God wants us to find in Jesus Christ, we have to learn how to rest, how to find appropriate rhythms in our life. We have to kill the pride in our lives. In our culture today, we seem to think that perhaps an ulcer is a symbol or a badge of being a hardworking person, but really it's just our pride. We need to somehow accept our own finitude. We need to understand that our days are numbered. And we will end life one of these days with unfinished business. We need to trust in God's providence. We need to trust that our relationship with God is the most important Thing in life, and it impacts everything else about us in our living. We need to realize that the King has issued to us an invitation. It's an invitation to a banquet, it's an invitation to a way of living, it's an invitation that precedes. The marriage, the marriage between the bride of Christ, the church, and the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. It is in an invitation to live in fellowship with God. One of the greatest truths in life is that our great God, the creator of the universe and our creator, desires fellowship with us. He wants a life of intimacy with us. He does not want us to just know about him, but to know him and to experience his presence in all of life. Friends, thank you for taking these moments today to nurture and nourish your soul. Thank you for taking these moments today to think about that which is most important in life. And I hope that all of us will find the grace, find the strength to so order our lives and tenaciously cling to our priorities. May we hear the gracious voice of God continually inviting us to the banquet. And I hope that this time that we've spent together this day will be indicative of the trajectory, the path of your life. And that this time that we 
have spent together this day will be indicative of how you, how we will spend eternity. May we pray. Oh God, for the gift of this day, we give you thanks. For the gift of a life well lived, we give you thanks. And we thank you for the grace that you have given us to live such a life. We thank you for the way that your spirit resides in us, those who have professed faith in Jesus Christ. We thank you for the way that you love us and that your love great brings great power into our lives. God, we pray that we will always hear you offering the invitation to us to join you in the banquet of living. God, help us to love you. Help us to love the people that you've given us to love with a great, great love, a love that can come only from Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time of worship with us today at Wesley Memorial Church in High Point. We have been honored by your presence and we would love to hear from you. Let us know if this service of worship has blessed you this day. Share some prayer concerns with us and we'll be very faithful in praying for you. And you can see our contact information at the end of the service today. 
Again, thank you for worshiping with us. And now may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you always. Amen.